Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Uh, sun's behind me, so I look a little bit wishy-washy, but there you go. Just come back from holiday. Straight back in an engine bay, there you go. So um, yeah, this um, this uh, little little job, I've had some problems with the vans and things today, there was a car, the vans in the garage, so a little bit late getting to this one, but basically what's happening is, uh, swapping an alternator out, this particular, the alternator originally had one of these external regulator packs with it that uh, all seemed to give up the ghost. Uh, and what we decided to do with the customer was, instead of trying to do another, you know, send all that way and X, Y, Z, it's just returned back to an ordinary alternator. So I'll show, I'll show you that other alternator in a second. They look pretty similar, but like I say, external reg pack. This particular one is just a standard alternator uh, w port uh, b plus and d plus and we should be away there might be a little bit of wiring to do but uh, anyway let me just show you down here what i'm up to right so there's the alternator in question i didn't take this out the customer did so i've had to figure out uh where the spacers go um so uh what you're trying to do really is get that pulley there in line with the crank pulley there or as close as you can Okay, so I uh, just had to figure out which which fixing was which, and it looks like this is the one. So I'll put that, I'll put the belt on in a second, and just make sure it's uh, as in line as it can be. And then I can uh, I can nip these up, get the tensioner on, and um, look at the wiring. So right, let's just pop that belt on and just make sure that that alignment is something like. Don't really know why this coach bolt is here. It's all in the bits of alternator stuff. <laughs> so, hmm. And I've got these T threaded bars. So this must be, how was it done? How was that done? No, I don't need all that. I'm gonna have a look at the other alternator because um, I, I, I don't think I need those. Yeah, well, here's the old alternator. Uh, same kind of pivot idea. That pulley's now on there. And the same tensioning point there. So, need to figure out how these went on. Uh, not not totally obvious right now. That's always the problem when you, you don't take something off yourself. And then you've got to try and figure out what it sort of looks like. Ah, I think I've got it. There's a fixed hole there. That's looking more like it. Yeah, so I'll just fix that in loosely. I just want to check down here. So there's the belt. You can see that's pretty parallel with the other one. Um, yeah, this is a this is slotted. This is a fixed hole, and they're using this old coach bolt here that uh, allows you to tension the belt. So as you tighten this one, it pulls the alternator back and so tightens the belt so and then you've got a lock nut you can lock it all up so it's not going to go anywhere if you lock up there it can't undo here either so so right all i've got to do really is tighten up the uh, or nip up the bottom pivot bolts i can tension the belt get that where that where that needs to be and um i can then just tighten them all up properly yeah not too bad not too bad it looks like it's all clear this looks a bit close but it is clear One of those five minute jobs. So the casting on the alternator just there is just catching on this bracket here. 
so it's not adjusting very smoothly. So um, the pivot brackets all look okay. Just just need nipping up a little bit. But yeah, it's just failing on there, so it's caused, it's caused me a bit of an issue. So I'm gonna go and get the grinder and just take a bit off the top of there. Okay, back on this narrow boat. Uh, the alternator you've just seen, yeah, that's on. Go wire it up. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna get into here, but there, there you go. Uh, three connections generally on a, maybe four. Three connections generally on an alternator. B plus, that goes to your batteries. That's the output current from the alternator. So the load, batteries. Um, D plus, which goes up to your ignition light, which sort of tickles the alternator, gets into life. And very often there's a W as well. Uh, now in this case, I think that W, which is actually the taco, will come off the starter alternator. So I won't have to worry about that too much. So um, those are your normal pins. Of course, there's a ground. Sometimes you get a separate ground cable. Uh, very often it's it's earthed, grounded through the engine block and the bracketry that goes to it. So um, you sometimes see an earth cable, but not, not in every case. But right, let's see if I can get this on. And then I can have a look at this uh, Webasto as well. So two jobs on here today that I'd like to get uh, to the bottom of. And we'll go from there, shall we? Yeah, right. Yeah, there, there's the drawing for the back of the alternator, the picture. You can see D plus, you can see W, and you can see B plus. So going back to what I just said a second ago, that's where we need to connect everything up to. Uh, I can see the B plus down here, which is obviously the biggest cable. Right, so this is the main battery cable here, which is going to go on there. Uh, I don't need that shroud on it because this is protected if you look. Here's the old master vault stuff I'm taking out this year. No need any of that. Uh, well, we move that in a second, so it's out of the way. In fact, let's do it now. Part of the old uh, alternator charging system. Right, so I've just got to put a crimp on here that broke off, which will go on to the D plus. So what I did just to identify that cable, switch the ignition on that cable goes positive twelve. So that is the exciting cable um, <laughs> for the um, the ignition cable for the uh, for the alternator to get up and going. So uh, pop a crimp on there. And then we can give that a little bit of a, a test. Okay, the alternator is working, but <laughs> um, this boat's got a bow thruster on it. So that alternator out because up to a split charge, that's not working at all. So um, we're gonna have to get one of those, swap that out, which is not too big a job, so that's okay. Um, it's on a steel plate, so drilling and tapping because the new one won't fit. But yeah, that, that's, that, that is all running okay, apart from that. So I'll grab that next week. Uh, just gonna just plug my laptop into the Webasto Thermotop C, 
well, C, Z, E, till I take it off one seed. Um, and then just see what's going on. So we'll see if I fire that up and see what that what needs to be done there. So here's the poor thermotop C. Oh, that doesn't look neglected, eh? Poor thing. It's um Yeah, not not the tidiest engine bay this one, and that's been that's been sat there for a very, very long time. I don't like those connectors on the top, alarms going straight away. But we'll see. Um yeah, we'll get it fired up and just see if I can see if I can see what's going on with it. There's the pump sat there, poor thing. Um, diesel's on, which is always good. But yeah, that's, that looks like it's not been off in a very, very long time. I'm just loading the software up. Cold today, it's one of them days where the uh, the cold gets into you a little bit. Right, so, thermotop C. See if it talks to me to start with, eh? Uh, diagnosis, start diagnosis. <laughs> Yep, comms lights are flashing, all looks okay. So we've got to uh, bring you over here. Maybe you can see that. Oh, that's better. Right, so we've got one fault. That sounds okay. You can't see it with my big bloody hand there. Circulating pump's okay. Combustion air fan. Look at the voltage. The voltage here. Dropping eight, eight volts. So that low voltage is actually our, our issue on this particular occasion. It's, it, that's with a fan going. If I tried to start that, it wouldn't go anywhere. So when I look at these connections, I mean, that, that's the earth, I would presume, which doesn't look particularly great, hey? Um, that might be our issue. Uh, there's also, like I say, there's a couple of automotive type connectors sat there on the positive, which is pretty rubbish. So um, which one to go for? Mm, that doesn't look great, does it? Not that one. So I'll pull these off and see what we'll see. I'll just give this earth here a waggle with a spanner. Straight away I'm up over 11, so I think that's the cause. Now with Basto, that's, a, that's a, what I call a bastardised loom. Um, with Basto, always recommend you take the ground and the... Let's turn that off, I don't need that one. The ground and the positive, straight back to the batteries. Not connecting it to bulkheads and connector blocks and what the hell ever it comes already made up so take it straight back to the batteries as soon I see this more often than I'd care to to remember or whatever um, I see it a lot where there's other connections involved that's where the problem tends to be so I'm gonna see if I can get that bolt off give it a bit of a clean for a stainless steel one in see if that cures the, the issue for now Okay, there's a bit more to it that meets the eye. Glow plug flame monitor short circuit. So that's uh, that's one of the problems. You can see this one here, I don't know if you can see this. The number of times we've had low voltage, 43 times. Normally when the glow plug is on, so a little bit of diagnostics there. Um, but yeah, there's a problem with the glow plug flame monitor, which is the same component on these. So that's going to have to come out. Uh. Yep, so I'm taking that out.
So the uh, control side, not too bad, but that's the 12 volt supply that is. Well, who knows? There's a really good chance that's gone down into the control module, the ECU. Those connections are knackered. I don't wish worth throwing any money there at all. Check with the customer, I guess. Right, so that's it for this job. Um, because the boat's going on sale, the customer's going to give the option to the new owner whether he wants this repaired or not. Um, there you go. It's quite a quite a costly repair, and you can't trust that in there. Couldn't guarantee you, could I? So that's it for this job. Um, I'll pop in and swap that uh, split charge over. Um, sometime next week, I'll go and grab one on Friday. That's a little job, just no, no, no trouble at all. And uh, there's our diagnosis for the Webusto. Unfortunately, a lot of the problems caused to it have been because of the way it's installed. So that there'd be no point putting a new one in and not addressing the water ingress. And you can see it from up here, actually. So those holes just, just open straight down and allow water just to pour all over the poor heater, poor thing. <laughs> um, that's, that might not be the whole problem. It's, it's coming up with a, a flame sensor short circuit, which might well be. But you know, if I change that, put it back on, there's no guarantee that that's going to work. So you, you know, you're throwing money after money after money. Um, so yeah, there we go. So that's the end of this job for now. Uh, I'm pretty cold now. I've a cup of coffee. Maybe with a drop of Kraken in it. Hmm. On the Tuesday night, Tuesday evening. So uh, unplug my computer, get everything back to the van, leave this here, and then um, yeah, bring on tomorrow's job which is a solar install, inverter, and lots of other things. Right, okay, see you next time, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, remember, kingfishermarine.co.uk, kingfish-marine.co.uk, or you Webasto, or you um, Victron, uh, Sterling, whatever. Cable, batteries, whatever you want, give me a shout. If it's not on the website, give me a shout. More than likely, I can get it to you wherever you are in the country. So, see you next time, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye.